Ignition sequence start. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. Hey everybody, this is the Digital Asset Investor, and today I'm going, I'm going to, I wanted to start this video by, by saying two, really cover, talking about two top things that I've talked about a lot on this channel, really the first, mainly, I've said on this channel a thousand times that words mean things, well there's another thing about life that I have learned as I've gotten older, and that is, a lot of times, um, as you get more and more experience in things, there are no coincidences. You'll see one thing, and then your mind will deliver up another thing, and then another thing. And sometimes, uh, if you have enough experience and you see enough things, they all come together, and you just can't you, you just can't say that this is all random. And so I have said on this channel that there are no coincidences. And having been in this space for I guess two years really in on Twitter and YouTube studying all this. I've started to talk about a lot of things that I didn't used to talk about. And the reason is because there are no coincidences. I've seen enough. I've it's all it literally some of the stuff dropped the, the connections of some of this stuff drop into my mind while I'm asleep sometimes now. Because I've seen so much and read so much that now you begin to you, you can't ignore the elephant in the room at some point and today i'm going to show you one of those all right and it and it it kind of went in motion I, my my brain has its own flywheel going on right now i guess that's one way to say it <laughs> it once this thing gets in motion and you see something and you're like wait a minute i saw this way back then well that that's been going on a lot with me lately and so you might find this interesting okay and it starts with this. This was a Yoshitaka Katal tweet, April 26, 2020. And um, I translated this. Now, remember, there's always a lot lost in translation. Virtual currency exchange FX coin acceptance of opening uh, an account to start Bitcoin trans, uh, transaction next month. Plan to test remittance using XRP. All right, so here's the article, and I did a translate on that. Uh, breaking news, virtual currency exchange, FX coin acceptance of opening an account to start Bitcoin transaction next month. There's a, there's obviously the way that's worded. There's some things lost in translation, but it says plan to test remittance using XRP. Um, and then as we go down, I just want to read this quote to you. Until now, crypto, at, this is from the FX senior strategist. Um, however you say that name. Until now, crypto assets have been used mainly for speculative purposes due to the magnitude of price movements. But in order to demonstrate the inherent superiority of crypto assets that enable quick money transfer and settlement at low cost, hedging price movements in order to establish the swap market and expand the usage for the purpose of actual demand in order to do so. We will proceed with the demonstration, experiment of domestic remittance and overseas remittance through XRP, and finally, global cash management and corporate finance and trade. Um, and remember that, trade, FX, trade, we keep hearing trade, trade, trade finance, all this. We would, we would like to expand the range of application to fields such as finance. Okay, then this morning, I'm reading, this is from Zero Hedge, I was reading this article, we all know last week um, here in the greatest, the great liquidity crisis is what I'll call this. The great liquidity crisis. Here we sit. We're moving into the end game. 27 tankers anchored off California and hundreds off Singapore as oil industry shuts down. And then last week, oil went into the negative for the first time in history. Now, I was just reading through this article. It talks about Saudi Arabia a lot. It talks about... Um, Tech, I get down here and, and it started talking about um, Texas. I saw the South Texas. Um, th these are the different um, Texas measurements of, of oil prices, I guess. And then I got down to here and I saw this video that we, we saw. Sorry. Um, we saw this video from. 
those are all tankers, oil tankers that are, some of them are off the coast of California. It says the U.S. Coast Guard says it's keeping an eye, an eye on these 27 tankers. Um, and then at the end here, it says no one is going to be able to dodge this bullet. Now, but the title of this article was, um, we are moving into the end game. 27 tankers anchored off California, hundreds off Singapore. So there's, um, but anyway, I'm looking at this article and I look at those tankers and I'm sitting there thinking to myself, if that, if this all, something's all coming together in my mind here. But then it, I, I go back to this. I was showing you this. I think this was the day before yesterday I was showing you this. Remember how Rachel Lee is this person that did this person that disappeared off of Twitter. And, she, and at the, at the time that she was on Twitter, I told you, I thought that it was all tinfoil hat stuff. But the reason I thought it was tinfoil hat stuff is because in 2018, all I really thought was, okay, here's XRP. These guys are really smart guys. Here's a new asset class. So we're all, we all, this is a big deal. And, 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 this, this new asset class is going to cause a lot of people that are in the best digital assets to make a lot of money. Not only do I still believe that, but I believe that Rachel Lee, I, I don't think that this is a coincidence. I think this person had a contact or knew something. And now I want to show you, I want to go back to something I showed you the other day because it's, it's, it's something that's stuck in my crawl. As, as she starts this thing, she's talking about the IMF and SDRs and the World Reserve Currency and all that like we've talked about a lot. Then she goes to this West Texas Intermediate. She, she says, so the WTI is a grade of crude oil used as a benchmark in oil pricing. It is the underlying commodity of the New York Mercantile Exchange as oil futures contracts. Other important oil markets that Ripple has known, known ties with, including Oman, Dubai, where they opened an office, and OPEC, Saudi Arabia, which is OPEC, they were, Saudi Arabia, they were talking about in that Zero Hedge article. So we go down, we go down, we go down. Um, and she says, here we find the New York Mercantile Exchange. It's a subsidiary of the CME Group. And we've talked about how the CME Group was one of the first investors in Ripple. And then she talks about how um, CME Group and then Miguel Baez left the CME Group after they invest to come to Ripple. Here's where I get very interested. She says, if, ever, if you ever thought that Ripple's partnerships were just random, think again. We've pointed this out previously and do so again. This is it right here, folks. Ripple's current partnership focus is on strategic interest, FX markets. Remember the FX market, the FX article we just covered? FX markets, oil markets, derivatives, not so much remittances as they make you believe. This jumps off the page at me, oil markets. And I'm, I'm here to tell you, folks, I think that all of this has a lot more to do with oil than than any of us ever believed. Oil shipping, and and I by the end of this video, I think you might think the same thing. Um, and and, and here's why I believe that. And Chris Larson's going to say it in a video. I'm going to show you at the end. How do you get everybody on board, folks? How do you get the whole world on board? How do you get China? Saudi Arabia, how do you get all of these? What is the one thing that ties us all together? It's our dependence on oil. <laughs> oil runs the world or, or has run the world for years and years and years and years and years. It's oil, oil. And so when she said that, that is what was going through my mark, mind. And then, and then she goes on to, to show some of these ripple connections and da, 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 da. So, and then goes into SDRs, which also, all of it involves oil, oil, oil. Okay, so let's, let's kind of go through this now. So here's a Ripple tweet where <clears throat> these are the, um, the Saudi Arabia, I think Saudi Arabian Monet Monetary Authority. These were just some of the people that were on stage at the 2018 Swell Conference. <clears throat> Blockchain DLT for us is a kind of tool. And remember. These are representatives for, from Payments Canada, Banco Central of Brazil, I guess, and then Saudi Arabia. Oh, uh, to solve things, I mean, we are looking for, uh, for the, the questions. We are looking for the, 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 the things regarding know our customers. The cryptocurrencies is not our goal for now. 
but we are seeing good things to do with uh, blockchain DLT and knowing our customers and exchange information inside the, the Brazilian financial system. And we are seeing something like good things from cross-border payments. All right. So there, uh, this is that was uh, Sama. Now here's Bank XRP, Sama again. Digital currency entering the market. Sama, along with the banking industry, has been is see, is keen to strengthen and modernize the payment mechanism to drive efficiencies. In particular, around cross-border transactions, Sama signed an agreement with Ripple on 14th February 2018 to launch a pilot program for depl deploying digital currency X current for local banks to facilitate cross-border payments. This is expected to significantly modernize the payment system and broaden the access network um, of Saudi Arabian banks to global financial institutions. And then we had this from Bank XRP, IMF Country Report number 18264. Sam signed a deal with US-based Ripple to help banks settle using blockchain software. The pilot uh, program supports banks with tra training to use Ripple software to instantly settle payments sent into and out of the country, the Saudi Arabia, um, and then there was this, Stephen Bull from the Diet. Uh, this is also someone from SAMA. Listen to this. And, um, um, actually, that is also uh, looking into the cross-border payments. Yes. However, in, in, the, uh, in, in the project that we have with, with uh, Ripple, uh, we don't, as a central bank, we don't uh, implement uh, any technology. It's, uh, it's uh, banks, commercial bank, who are implementing the technology. Yes. Uh, however, we choose to start this uh, project uh, as an approach we used in, in SAMA, we call it central bank-led innovation. Yes. And, and that is how we started some innovative uh, initiatives from SAMA itself as a central and uh, encourage the banks to, to use the innovative technologies and the, the new technologies. And um, we choose uh, Ripple at that time because they have a very focused use case. Yes. So it, it, it is not uh, related to the technology, it's more related to the use case itself and, and the focus of, of the company in the cross-border payments. Uh, and because, as, as you mentioned before, that uh, we are, uh, uh, the outgoing remittance is, is very high in, in Saudi. So um, we started the program. So Sama was leading the program. We were steering it. Um, also, we... Uh, do the training for all the banks on uh, deep deep dive training on, on the blockchain and, and Ripple technology. And the bank themselves, they started the, the implementation of the technology based on different use cases that were discussed in, in the program. And uh, the bank started using actually the technology on production. In, in the last oh, really? few months, we had one bank who went live in, in production using uh, Ripple X current. Another bank is going very soon, and we have two more banks going also in, in this first quarter of 2019. All right. So remember, <clears throat> as you watch this video, remember, there are no coincidences, folks. And, and, when, when, and when you've been doing this and talking about, I mean, think about this. We've been, I've been talking about one company and one digital asset for going on almost two years now. And a lot of people in this space that have really been plugged in there are no coincidences, folks. This all adds up to one thing. It's it's it adds what it adds up to is interoperability. Between, it, it adds up to all the money and interoperability through the interledger protocol. It all adds up. Keep watching. Here we go. And then there was this article: Sam, a Ripple pilot can save up to four hundred million dollars cross-border payments. Moody's. Saudi banks will potentially improve their profitability on cross-border transactions by reducing the cost of each transaction while gaining revenue in higher volume as customer experience improves with, with the saving of money and time. Um, and that's from Moody's. And then there was this. Wrath of Kahneman, uh, this is back November 21, 2019. Very interesting how this report links Ripple's agreement with SAMA to IBM Maersk. Trade. Now, Maersk is one of the largest shipping companies in the world. You see these container ships, these oil ships, these, these ships that sh are shipping massive amounts of oil, these ships that are that are docked off of California. Think Maersk. They're one of the large, or probably the largest in the world. Um, with SAMA, uh, Ripple's agreement 
very interesting how this report links Ripple's agreement with SAMA to IBM Maersk trade lens as a way to connect all stakeholders, opening other possibilities. Nice blockchain overview with Reed Smith. And here's the Saudi Arabian Monetary Authority Agreement with Ripple. And then down here it says, further, a pilot scheme successful concluded at the end of 2008 between the Saudi Custom Authority's trade platform and with IBM and Maersk uh, platform trade lens used together. These trade platforms connect all stakeholders involved in cross-border trade and serve as the foundational base for a whole host of digital supply chains. Um, and so then we go to this. This is, I don't know who this is, Dr. Fahad, whatever. Maersk and IBM have created a trade lens, a solution jointly developed by the two companies to apply blockchain to the world's global supply chain. Saudi customs, think about what the biggest problem in this world is right now. It's, it's, supply, it's the supply chain and it's oil right now, folks. World's global supply chain, Saudi customs, KSA customs, along with 93 organizations and port operators. Um, anyway, that's an article about it. And then here's the other article. Maersk, IBM say 94 organizations have joined the blockchain trade platform. Here's Maersk. Does that look familiar? Um, how about those ships docked off of California and Singapore, by the way? Um, this is Maersk, one of the largest. Um, and, and then this is their trade lens. You can watch, uh, I'm, I'm going to show you just a tad bit of this. Every day around the world, millions of shipping containers are in motion. An incredible achievement of logistics, coordination, and communication. But legacy data systems and manual document handling cause friction that costs both time and money for businesses and people throughout the supply chain. I just wanted to show you the intro that, to that. You saw the shipping containers. And remember, folks, as I said, there are no coincidences. I've uh, been around long enough now. Then Wrath of Kahneman comes in and says this in um, March 20th this year. Um, Blythe Masters, former digital asset CEO, proposed as Maersk board director. Maersk drives trade lens with IBM, digitize, digitize, digitizing trade with Hyperledger. Ripple partner, Standard Charter, joined TL recently. Yeah, remember Standard Charter that's one node on the network away where Kahina Van Dyke now is? And Brad Garlinghouse said they're one node on the network away. That Standard Charter, they joined um the um trade lens recently daml is also integrated with hyperledger now interesting okay all right and then we go to this from matthew lini um this was tweeted on july 3rd 2019 will xrp be the bridge asset for trade lens shipping platform built on im hyperledger blockchain trade lens secured five of the six largest shipping containers now, at this point, folks, you need to ask yourself, is all of the money, would that include the money going through uh, the money that's being transacted uh, oil? Think petrodollar around the world. Okay, check this out. So he, in Matthew Lani's, um in his um, things, the thing he's tweeting here, look at this. I had never seen this. I missed this, this article right here, but I'm about to show it to you. A network of networks will unleash the true value of blockchain. From May 14th, 2019, um, James Wallace is the guy. I, I thought that was very random. Maris Executive Trade Lens um, cured critical mass. More than uh, da 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 da. That's something about trade lens. And then the shipping industry sees the expansion of di digital collabora collaboration as being critical to the evolution of container shipping industry. Um, and then you you can kind of see some of these companies here. All right, and then he has this part. This is supply chain logistics. The IBM, this is from Ripple Insights, ripple.com, folks. Why would they be talking about this? Supply chain logistics, the IBM and Maersk collaboration trade lens is using blockchain to digitize and automate millions of supply chain events every week, providing all network participants with real-time tracking and provenance information. Da, 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 folks. So here's the article that he um, has made me aware of. I didn't know. I didn't know. No, look, look, watch this part. So, so you got to ask yourself the question: Why? This is pretty random. Of all the things that on Ripple.com, every time you see something on Ripple Insights and Ripple.com, 
they're announcing some new partnership or something having to do with Ripple. This is not about Ripple, but they thought it was important for them to highlight, just like just like in 2016, I think it was, when they decided to highlight BNY Mellon. <laughs> um, okay. And then it, the BNY Mellon, it was not announcing BNY Mellon as a partner either. They just thought it was important to talk about BNY Mellon. Now, here it is. So this guy, um, you go down here. Where it says right here, through... Though there are blockchain projects up and running in a range of sectors from government and sciences to utilities and consumer markets, three of the best, the best practical applications of the technology today are as follows. Financial payments. Ripple is using blockchain to enable near instant cross-border payments for hundreds of financial institutions at a fraction of the cost of the typical expensive three to five day transaction settlement period. Trade finance. We trade as a joint venture between 13 major European banks that is opening up new profit pools and reducing risk, trade risk with blockchain by increasing visibility for all, excuse me, all participants with an automated real-time trade process for order to payment. Supply chain logistics, the IBM and Maersk collaboration, TradeLens is using blockchain to digitize and automate millions of supply chain events every week providing all network participants with real-time tracking and provenance information. And it goes on and on and on. But the point, and then it, it, there's also a section about fixing the interoperability issue. Um, the value of this network of net, remember this, network of networks does not stop with payments, trade, and supply chains. So in other words, the reason Ripple put this article out is because it's all going to connect, folks, all the money. All the oil money, all the trade money, all the supply chain money, all the money, ILP, all the money, okay? But there's no, remember, there's no coincidences, folks. Okay, so they mentioned up here in this, they mentioned WeTrade. So they said that they've got banking part. This is a, look, it's a WeTrade platform. It's a digital one-stop shop for trade. The platform built on the IBM blockchain platform using Hyperledger fab Fabric offers banks, customers access to simple user interface, leveraging innovative smart contract and opening up potential new trading opportunities. Who are these banking partners of theirs? Well, just so happens that some of them are also banking partners of Ripple. There's H HSBC, Rabobank, UBS, Society, General, Santander, Unicredit, you might recognize some of those names, folks. Okay, so what does this all lead us to? Well, remember this? Remember the remember the NTT, the Everest document that Love for Crypto found? Remember this? And by the way, go give Love for Crypto a, a subscribe on YouTube and give him a give him a follow. If there's anybody who called all this stuff, Love for Crypto did. Go give him a a follow on Twitter as well. Um, and then remember this, remember how 2020 is when ILP is finally the standard protocol? That's for the money, folks. It's for all the money. 2020 to 25, blockchains, solutions for capital markets, and trade finance emerge and list Hyperledger fabric right there, okay? And then there was this, remember this? You think IBM's not involved in any way with Ripple? This is This is how it all ends, folks, right here. Hyperledger Fabrics here, IBM's here, Trade Finance, Blockchain, and DLTs. And what's in the center of it all? XRP Ledger. Now, I keep telling you in this video, and I'm sorry if this video is going to be a little longer than normal, but I keep, I've said it several times in this video, two things, words mean things. There are no coincidences. There's been a theme that came out of Ripple from day one, and here's the theme. And I don't think it's a coincidence. I think they. I think this has been a plan all along. Watch this. 2018, Brad Garlinghouse at Swell. Certainly something that you know well. Now, if we step back and look at how we got here in other interoperable areas, the goods industry. Some of you might have wondered. There's a a, a kind of mock-up of a container, a cargo container downstairs. Some of you may have noticed and thought, "What's up with the cargo container? It's kind of odd to be placed there." When Ripple thinks about what we're building, we use a cargo container sometimes as a metaphor for the interoperability. The reason is this is a visual in the you know, early 1900s of what a shipping dock looked like. Now you think about the pain 
of enabling shipping when every port had a different infrastructure. Every package was, was packaged up differently. It made shipping incompatible. It wasn't interoperable. Now imagine taking that shipping, shipping uh, you know, one of these packages and moving it onto a train. Everything was not interoperable. In the 50s, we invented something kind of mundane, the cargo container. Th this cargo container enabled interoperability between boats, trains, trucks, and over the next two decades, we saw a 700% increase in global commerce. This was the interoperability of different networks coming together to reduce friction and reduce cost in a very material way. Now, if you look at that on the data side, and I'll spend less time on there's one example, folks. Keep on watching. There are no coincidences. This is Eric Van Miltenberg of Ripple. Uh, thank you to Bank XRP. Let me see who gave me this one. That's from Ripple. This is from Bank XRP. Give him a subscribe as well. This is Eric Van Miltenberg, and I can't remember his title, but he's with Ripple. Let me grow and actually work. I, I'd argue there's three components that are critical to actually tr create that, that, that kind of economic globalism and two of them we've checked off one I don't think we have and it, and it has to do with the internet of value so um, the first one interesting fact about this picture this was taken the year that I graduated from Tuck <laughs> for a little more laughter there damn um, so uh, what does it have to do with anything so shipping if you think about shipping of physical goods if you look back I think this picture was probably taken I don't know, uh, early, early 20th century. Shipping physical goods was hard, not only because we didn't have, have airplanes and whatnot, but when you think about how packaging of physical goods happened, it, there was no rhyme nor reason. You know, the, the goods came t from all different parts of the world. There was different methodologies, shipment. It was super expensive and prohibitive, and as a result, a lot of commerce didn't happen. Things didn't move across the world simply because the economics associated with making that happen was, was, didn't make sense. You couldn't make the business model work. So in the 1950s, voila, the shipping container. Like, you look at a shipping container, it's just a big metal box, right? Well, actually, it was a huge innovation. The shipping container was standardized around the world, and it kind of revolutionized how physical goods were transported. And there's a word I'll, word I'll use a few times here, and that's interoperability. So kind of component one of, of making a, a truly efficient global economy is interoperability of physical goods. And I'd argue that the innovation of the shipping container was a fundamental uh, uh, milestone in ensuring that that happened in a way. Because when you think about what happens is I can go anywhere in the world and that shipping container is the same. I can go from factory, putting that shipping container on a truck that goes to a train, that goes to a cargo ship, that ship goes to a new port in a totally different spot in the world, it'll be the same infrastructure that has been built around that allows the logistics around shipping to happen in a far more efficient way. And there's statistics that show in a 20 year period, I, I, frankly, I don't know if it's from you know, the, the 50s or the 70s or the 60s or the 80s, there was a 700% increase in the, the transport of goods in, in North America, in the Northern Hemisphere, I should say, not North America, they can be traced back to the fact that we have this interoperability with physical goods. So I think. All right. And then you got this. This is also from Bank XRP. Chris Larson, September 2018. You know, they're fairly recent as well. Data and goods. They were, we didn't always have a global system uh, of data and goods. And think about how I love talking about shipping containers. So let me talk about shipping containers. Uh, think about how shipping goods was before the invention of the shipping container incredibly inefficient, incredibly labor intensive, huge bottleneck for the world. You know, the dock workers could go on strike, everything shuts down. Goods would have to come into a port, they'd have to be unpacked and repacked, shipped out a completely different way. It was a mess and this was clearly holding back the world. And then along comes this super simple technology, the shipping container, just a metal box. Uh, and boom, suddenly every port in the world, every city is interoperable to every other city. Every ship interoperates with every train and every truck, every, every warehouse. Totally changed the way the, the world works. By the way, it costs now four cents to move a shirt all the way across the world from, say, Vietnam, China to the U.S., four cents. That's, that's incredible. And importantly, this was not because of the invention of a new shipping company. It was 
it was the invention of a simple standard, a simple box, a simple technology that everybody could use that was endlessly scalable and that was simple enough for people to, uh, to agree on. It led to completely different shipping companies that the world has never seen before. And it led to a complete transformation of ports and the way cities operated, mostly run by robots, not, not by people. So it changed everything, about a 700% increase since the 1950s in global trade because of it. That's a huge win. We all know what happened with data sometime after the shipping. Okay, so then there's that. And then I wanted to finish this. Now, here's the point. The point of all of this, folks. The first thing is that this whole shipping container idea, I, I, I think it's very obvious that this was a, um, th this has been a coordinated theme, right? Um, we even saw Glenn Hutchins talk about compare ILP to the shipping container, and, and and he didn't use the words Ripple or XRP, but he he was trying to be generalized about it. But there are no coincidences, remember. And finally, the question that a lot of people have: Well, okay, well these are digital assets, but oh come on, you this is a bunch of conspiracy, and you're like China and all or the IMF and all this is going to be worldwide. Well, in the next clip, um, Chris Larson is going to tell you, he, he, he poses this thing, how do you get people like China on board? All us crazy people out here that think that the plan has always been, this is a, a worldwide thing. They've told you this. They're not, they haven't been secretive about it. They've told you this. I said it a thousand times on this channel. Ripple has been honest with you from the very beginning. Now, you may not, when you hear words like New World Order and you hear words that are used that that may make you either uncomfortable or like what oh come on they that was just a slip of the tongue they didn't mean that well you hear them one time okay they didn't mean it hear it again hear it again hear it again hear it again and then eventually there's a pattern and, and if you want to ignore the patterns and ignore all of the things that your mind might be delivering up while you're sleeping the way it has with me over the course of the last six months you can ignore it if you want. Digital asset investors are going to benefit from it. So here you go. Shipping container is super basic. Um, and why it's so profound is before the shipping container, of course, shipping goods um, was super labor intensive, super inefficient, like moving money is today. You'd send stuff to a port. It had to be unpacked right there at the port, repacked. Um, it was a huge drag on global commerce. And then along comes a shipping container, so the goods stay in that container at the point of, of, uh, of manufacturing, sent right to their local port through a truck, a train, then to a ship, back to another ship, another train, another truck, interoperable in any port around the world. And when that was created in the 1950s, 700% increase in global trade, completely transformed ports everywhere, created a Cambrian explosion of new sh types of shipping companies, it's exactly what you saw with the internet, by the way, and it's exactly what you're going to see with a very low level. Again, that can't be Bitcoin or Ethereum or the XRP ledger. That will be a part of what happens here. But those things are heavy. They're thick. They're shipping companies with certain features that will never be acceptable to everybody in the world. You need something super low level, uh, something like the interledger protocol is what, again, what we believe in, which is super basic, is not, it's not a ledger, and it's just like it's not a shipping company, um, but something that the Chinese can get behind, uh, you, you can get something in the developing world could get behind, Gates Foundation could get behind, which they have, uh, the Americans could get behind, very basic, very simple. And also very importantly, you know, if you deploy a shipping container in Los Angeles, the port of Los Angeles, it has no effect on the shipping container being used in Amsterdam um, or whatever the port is there. Um, that's not true with databases. One additional entry to the Bitcoin ledger or to HSBC's ledger creates scalability issues to everything else in the system. That, that's why that can't work to be that network of networks. Okay, and then finally, I wanted to reiterate the point. There, this interledger protocol, we're talking about all of the money. And, and if you don't think that XRP is going to be somewhere in the in the equation in the movement of all of the money then you need to think again and think about it this way if we're talking about all the money what is all of the money well all of the money is into the quadrillions if all of the money is into the quadrillions and and xrp is even 
10% of that flow of all of the money. What does that mean for you as an XRP holder? I believe that XRP is about all the money, all the oil money, all of the supply chain money, all the trade finance money. I believe that I believe exactly what you're looking at on this chart is that the XRP ledger the, and the interledger protocol are right in the middle of all of the money. And if you don't want to believe it, don't believe it. But um, I'll be here when um, once once we're proven to be right um, and, and we will we'll talk about it. I'm the digital asset investor. I'm not an investment advisor. This is for entertainment purposes only. Please subscribe and hit the like button and tell your friends and family that it's about all the money. And at some point, you have to acknowledge that. Thanks for listening.